So it's now time to build uh, the core of our application, essentially what we're going to be accessing database data with. Uh, our system wouldn't work uh, properly without this. We wouldn't be able to store anything. Um, and what we're going to be building here is a database wrapper. Um, and essentially what this is, it's an abstracted way to work with our database uh, and give ourselves easy to work with functionality. Now the beauty of this database wrapper is that it can be used outside of this application as well. So once you finish writing this code, you're going to be able to use this in anything you do. Uh, and that's the point really of building it like this. It's, it's code reusability, something that isn't tied directly to our application. We can use this anywhere we want. Um, now we're going to be using PDO, PHP data objects, uh, for the sole reason that we can actually then define what kind of database that we want to work with. Um, in, in this case we're going to be using MySQL because it's so popular. Uh, but we can of course uh, change this and, and work with any other database that uh, that's supported by PDO. So um, let's go ahead and start to define our class. Now we're going to be testing this along the way uh, in our index.php file. So we're going to be looking at the kind of things it does. And we're also going to be keeping an eye on our database. So we're going to be inserting things, extracting things, uh, querying, updating, looking at security and stuff like that. So this is quite a large uh, thing to build. But once we're done, uh, we can sort of relax and, uh, and know that we can work really efficiently with our database. So let's go ahead and define the class. This is just going to be DB. Now we're going to be working with um, a pattern in PHP uh, called the singleton pattern. Um, so we're going to have a main static in, uh, static method called get instance. And this is just going to allow us to get the, an instance of our database if it's already been, um, if it's already been instantiated. Uh, and basically this means that we don't have to keep connecting to our database again and again and again um, on each page. We can just use the database on the fly as we want. Um, if you were to create a class with a constructor, um, which we'll do in a moment, you would be, every time you need to use, instantiate your database object to perhaps create a new query and take a new set of results, you'd be connecting to your database again and again and again, which is very, very inefficient. So we're just going to be using the get instance static uh, method in this case. If that doesn't make sense, don't worry. As we build the code, it will make perfect sense, hopefully. So the first thing that we're going to do is create um, a, a public, oh no, we can create a private static variable called instant instance that's going to be null and let's give that a underscore as well so what we've done here is we've created a private static uh, property to our object and this is going to store the instance of the database if it's available if or if it's not available we're going to instantiate our db object from within it and store it here again sounds complicated but once we get around this pattern it's going to make things uh, or things should become a lot clearer eventually so we have some other private properties um, these aren't going to be static properties these are just going to be private properties within our object uh, which won't be accessible to outside of this class won't be accessible to anything that uh, extends from this um, we just need them to be private there's no need for them to be public so we have uh, private PDO uh, and the underscore basically is a notation uh, that lets us know that as we're using these they are private properties and they're not uh, they're not uh, public or protected or protected would use underscore two so we have uh, PDO query and I'll explain all these in just a moment error results and count we're gonna set count to zero and we're going to set error to false. Now we can bring these down line by line to just make it look a bit neater. Make things make a little bit more sense. So what's happening here is we've got PDO. Uh, this is going to represent the um, when we when we instantiate the PDO object, we're going to store it here so we can use it elsewhere. Query is going to be the last query that's executed. Error is going to represent whether there's an error or not, so whether the query failed or not. Uh, and we'll have a method to check or return whether there has been an error. Um, we have results which will store our result set. So if we were to pick, say, uh, all users with the name, uh, the first name Alex, 
that will be our result set. Say there's 10 users, they'll all be stored there. And the count of results, which is extremely important because we're also going to provide a method that's going to allow us to say, you know, is there, um, have there been any results returned or something like that? So basically, the way that we're going to use our database class is going to be similar to this. So it's really useful to take a look at what we actually want our database object to do, and then we can build it. So for example, let's say we want to grab a list of all users. The way we want this to work is um, we want to have um, a uh, basically the ability to just say, um, get me uh, a certain amount of data. So quite simply, we could say uh, something like users equals db uh, get instance. Now this is going to be the, the method, the static method that we're going to create as part of the singleton object. So we'll, we will cover this in detail in a moment. Uh, and we'll then say something like query select username from users. So that's it. Now what we can do is say something like if users count. Uh, that would actually probably be a method uh, that we'd use. So let's create that as a method. Um, then we can say for each users as user echo user username. And because we're going to be returning an object, this basically represents the um, field name in a database. So that would be that would represent this. So this is the way that we're going to be building things. Now there's a lot more functionality um, than this, but you can see looking at this, it makes it a lot easier to work with your database rather than having to, you know, connect to PDO at the top of your page, execute a query, blah, blah, blah. Um, we can basically do everything like this. And we're going to have a lot of helper methods as well that are going to allow us to define things in a, in a certain way. So for example, uh, we could say get um, from users um, and we could say yeah, so we can define something like where username equals Alex. So we're basically going to be building this functionality and it makes it so easy to work with your database. I mean, look at that. It, it sort of reads like a book. Get, get users where the username equals Alex or username is greater than five or it wouldn't be username, would it? It would be something like points. I don't know. It, it, you can use this for a variety of, of purposes. So that's what we're basically going to be doing. So uh, let's go ahead and... Um, and create our constructor function. And this is just, all this is going to do is connect to our database. So let's go ahead and create a private method. And this will be construct. And this is run when the um, class is in, in, instantiated. Now we're going to try the PDO connection and we're going to catch a PDO error. Um, so this is basically a, tr a try catch block, which allows you to um, basically catch errors inside of the try block. So um, if if we do have an error, we're basically just going to kill the application and then output the message that's returned from this. Um, and when we are working with our, our connection, we'll, we'll mess around with the settings and see how this affects it. Um, but what we're going to do is we're going to set the PDO uh, private PDO property to the PDO connection. So we're going to say new PDO. And this is just standard syntax. You can find this in, in the PHP documentation. Um, so what, the way this, this basically looks is it's a string. Then we have a username and a password. Uh, the initial string defines what um, what database um, uh, basically a handler or whatever, however you want to call it, you want to connect to. Um, and then it defines the database name as well um, and the host, obviously. So in this case, we're connecting to a MySQL database. The host is going to be basically the host that we define. And I'm just going to put X's and Y's and Z's here because uh, we're going to use our config uh, class that we created to actually handle this. So the host is going to be um, 127.0.0.1. The DB name is going to be uh, the database name that we defined. And then we have a username and we have our password. So we'll put Z and A, for example. So um, for the host, let's go ahead and just concatenate on a value. This is going to be config 
get MySQL host, as we saw when we created our um, our config um, here. So this is basically reading MySQL host. So the database name is going to be uh, config get MySQL DB. Simple as that. And then for the username and the password, we already know that we've stored these in the config. Um, they are here and here. So we just do exactly the same thing. Config get MySQL username and exactly the same here. So let's just go ahead and just copy and paste this and change this to password. So that's it. That's our that's our line of out of connecting to our database. Let's go ahead and give this a go um, just by saying db equals new db, and we'll look at um, we'll look at sorting this out in just a moment. In fact, this is not going to work, um, and and this is the whole point of the singleton pattern. Um, we need to call db instance. So uh, if we were to say db get instance. We uh, have the well. We create the public static method, and that's going to be called get instance. Now, what this is going to do, it's going to check if we've already instantiated our object. And by instantiating our object, we're creating, we're connecting to our database. If we haven't instantiated, we're we're going to instantiate it. If we have, we're going to return the instance. So in this case, we need a check here to say if. The instance is not set, so that's self. Remember, we're dealing with static properties here, so we need to use uh, self and then the scope uh, resolution operator here. And we're going to say self instance. So if that's not been set, we want to actually go ahead and set that. Uh, new DB, sorry. So what this is going to do is if this isn't set, which by default it won't be when we're using this on, say, one page, we want to go ahead and create a new DB instance that's going to run this, set PDO here, and it's then going to uh, return self instance. So we can start using all of the functionality of our class or our object. So if in the case that we use this twice on a page, this will no longer be valid. So this will this will return false. And all we'll do is just return the instance that we're currently working with. We can create a new query. We just don't have to reconnect to our database. So let's take a look at and, and sort of prove how this actually works. So let's refresh. So we don't have an error. We, we know now that we are more than likely just using the right credentials. But if we were to say root Z or something like that, we go ahead and refresh. You can see that we we kill the page and we uh, we get the error back there. So we know that we're connecting successfully to our database, or we we can as safely assume that we are. Let's take a look at what happens here. So if I go ahead and echo connected here. In fact, we'll put that inside of the try block. So um, let's go ahead and refresh. So we say connected. Now because we're where we would ordinarily be running the constructor function every time we instantiate this uh, class, create an object from it, we'd assume that if we were to do this, then we would see this message again and again and again. But because we're first calling get instance, we're checking whether this has been set or not, i.e. we're checking whether this private uh, construct method has been called and we've actually connected to our database. So when I refresh now, refreshing the page, we only connect once. Now, if this was to be reversed and we had this as a public function and we were to ignore the fact that we were to get instance and we were to say something like db equals new db and do this over and over and over and over again, what we're then doing is if we were to use this uh, down a page, um, you know, a few times, we're connecting to our database again and again and again. There's no need to. We only need to... Uh, we only need to store one connection, one uh, sort of link to our database, if you like. So by doing this, we actually avoid the need to having or to have to or even accidentally connect to our database again and again and again. So we've connected to our database. Um, really, what's left to do now is just go over the, um, the, the useful uh, methods that we need to create inside of our database. 
um, to be able to pull data uh, and actually manipulate data, update things, delete records uh, and things like that.